The 10th studio-length album by Amana Marth, Yom's Vakin, which was released back in 2016, is one of my favorite albums of all time. Talked about it in my recent video of metal albums that I think are perfect 10 out of 10s, definitely go check that out, shameless plug. But one thing that I remember researching at the time that I wanted to sort of put into a video for you guys is the real history behind Yom's Vakin. At the time when I first heard this record, I wasn't really familiar with the real history of the album, and obviously the story itself isn't necessarily necessarily based on anything in particular, but the subject matter as well as the existence of the Yom's Vakin is actually of a lot of historical significance, especially in the literary and saga way when it comes to Scandinavian history. I was not familiar with the fact that the Yom's Vakin were actually a real group of people, or at least purported to be real, and that's where the story kind of gets interesting. Yom's Vakin, the album, is pretty much about this person, that this dude, this Viking, this lone soldier that gets pissed off when the woman that he loves ends up getting married off to someone else and in his fit of berserker's rage and anger and frenzy he ends up killing someone else and pretty much has to go on the run and becomes an exile but tells himself that he's always going to return to the woman he loves and goes on this arc this redemption arc this quest to try to return to her encountering all sorts of different things it's a very Amonomarth type of thing Amonomarth have always played around with the thematic elements of Norse mythology that is pretty much the entire base plate that their music is built upon it is the foundation. Now, whether or not the Jomsvikin are a real group or not remains to be seen and pretty much is never going to be able to be proven, but here's the history of them. It's hard to prove if a lot of things are true or not when it comes to sagas and historical relevance from the Scandinavians because as opposed to, say, the British or the Greeks or the Romans or the Egyptians, there were a lot less keen on keeping records or rather a lot of it was lost to the sands of time. There were also bad about sort of keeping track of who wrote what with the main saga that the Jomsvikin are pretty much talked about in being written by an anonymous author that does not have a distinctive identity that anyone can trace it to and when you look at a lot of the Icelandic sagas that pretty much is a consistent thing. Icelandic sagas are sort of the umbrella term for any artistic medium in the literary way from that time period of historical or epic tales that were told in Scandinavia. This includes included Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Iceland, and probably the Faroe Islands as well, but I'm not too well versed in that type of stuff. A big comparison that I can make between the Jomsvikin and a later group is the Knights Templar. You've always heard of like Crusaders and Templars in the Middle Ages when it came to these Paladin-esque figures that would uphold the word of God and uphold Christianity. The Jomsvikin were pretty similar to that. They were a group of the best of the best warriors in the land. They were mercenaries that upheld the religious tradition to a T, but purportedly would also sort of sell themselves away if someone was able to pay a high enough price to pretty much buy their sword, even if they were Christian. There are numerous Numerous sagas that detail things about them or battles or history of them. The Jomsvikina saga is pretty much the primary one that talks a lot about it. They were written the most about in the 12th and 13th centuries. On I believe if I remember correctly the southern coast of the Baltic Sea stood a stronghold by the name of Jomsborg and I hope I am pronouncing that correctly and it was a legendary stronghold that housed the Jomsvikin. Now, it's one of those things where religion and historical accuracy sort of intersect because Jomsborg is very much seen as a real place that existed that was has historical evidence and archaeological evidence to back up the existence of. Whereas the Jomsvikin actually staying there and that being their primary place of residence, that's unclear. But one thing about the Scandinavians is, as opposed to like the Greek, and the Romans that sort of interlace their own beliefs and their own religions and their own, I guess, historical events into their material when they wrote literary or when they painted, the Scandinavians were much more on the epic and fantasy scale. And so while the base plate was based in reality, there were a lot of things that were pushed to the extreme and over-exaggerated. The things about the Jomsvikin is they were very selective in the ages that they would allow into their ranks as well as the rigorous training and 
battle-hearted demeanor that you would have to have. There is one story, though, that I think is really cool, which is of this, like, young boy that I believe was, like, 12 or 13 that supposedly defeated a very, like, battle-hardened Viking in a battle and ended up being the youngest person in the Jomsvikin. Much like other primitive rituals and ways that they would determine warriors at the time of that history, they also always had rituals for who would become a part of their ranks, and this would always be a feat of strength, a duel, a battle, something to test how strong they were because anything that was weak was pretty much kicked the fuck out or not allowed in in the first place. I also read that they were not allowed to retreat, they were not allowed to show fear, they were not allowed to flee in any form or fashion, they were not allowed to leave Yomsborg for more than like three days at a time, or like they weren't allowed to be away from Yomsborg for long periods without notifying someone, and even then they had to stay in the walls at all times. No women were allowed in the walls, no children were allowed in the walls, and... Whether or not they were allowed to take wives or bear children, that is unclear. That kind of comes along with the thing of only the battles and the hardened section of their saga is what is sort of still existing to this day, so it's hard to tell what the, I guess, lore of them actually is. It is pretty widely agreed upon that the Yomsvikin are not as legendary as some people might say they are. There are many battles and historical evidence that show that in Scandinavia's early history there was a group of very strong Vikings that were not inherently tied to either side, completely changing the tide of battle or winning them entirely or fighting them from an angle that you would not expect at that time period with such vigor and low numbers that it only adds to the belief that they existed. Sagas are one thing, but one thing that the Scandinavians shared with the Greeks is they filter a lot of their history through poetry. And in Old Norse poetry, specifically a couple of the very ethnic-based poet traditions, there are numerous accounts of the battles of the Jomsvikin and them fighting, or at least even if they are not spoken by in name. There is a group that is routinely mentioned around the specific period of time that the Jomsvikin were supposedly at large, which people kind of put two and two together, that even if the sagas themselves were romanticized and sort of over-exaggerated, there was most likely a very elite group of Vikings at the time. It's unknown what happened to the Jomsvikin. Very similarly to the Templars, they pretty much vanished in thin air and they dissolved to where there is a big gap in history where they just ceased to exist and they didn't return or at least there were no credible accounts of their existence past the point of the century that they were at large in. You can make your own conclusions of what the hell that means, but meh. I personally just think this story is really interesting, and I highly suggest you guys to go research things about the Jomsvikin too, because it's such a cool part of history, and I love that Amon and Marth pulled from that and let the time of the Jomsvikin sort of drive this album. With that being said, what are your thoughts of Jomsvikin as an album, as well as the history behind it? Let me know down in the comment section below. Be sure to do that. I can't wait to hear your opinions on it. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to join the review family today, and smash that notification bell to be notified of my future uploads. You know who it is. My name is Jay Morris, and I'm signing off. Saying